x-intercept, where the graph crosses the x-axis. Where the graph crosses the x-axis. What's another word for crosses? Intercepts. That's why it's called the x-intercept. It's where it physically intercepts the x-axis. On this graph right here would be the x-intercept. And the reason this is such a special point is because wherever it crosses the x-axis, we know the y-coordinate. What's the y-coordinate of any point on the x-axis? Zero. So it's where y equals zero. Tim, can you take out your headphones, please? What do you think the definition of the y-intercept is? Yep, where the graph crosses the y-axis. And we talked about this y-intercept yesterday when we did y equals mx plus b. We're just going to talk about it a little more today. There is the y-intercept. It's a special point because what do we know about the x-coordinate of the y-intercept? It equals 0. So this is where x equals 0. So x-intercept, that's where the other coordinate equals 0. y-intercept is where x equals 0. <coughs> Why do we need to know this? What's the purpose? Well, let's look at the situation. So again, just keep in mind, I've told you all this unit is about applied, so this is applying it now to a situation. Next unit, we'll look at the pre-cal approach. What's the graph about? Burning a candle. That's why titles are so important on graphs, because it tells you right away what are we dealing with. Height and burning candle. The fact that time is on the bottom tells you it is what variable? Independent. Height is on the y, which tells you it is dependent. How do you know this is a linear function? Because it's a line. So question A is, what is the x-intercept? What does it represent? X-intercept is wherever it cuts the x-axis. So you're coming along the graph, looking right there. Tell me, what is the value of the x-intercept? 45. Give me some units. Minutes. What does it represent? Well, it's telling you the actual coordinate of the other variable. What do you know about the height at that x-intercept? So the x-intercept, the other variable, equals 0. So this is telling you h equals 0. But what does that mean in terms of the context? The candle is gone. Candle is burnt out. Burned or burnt? This is where the English language confuses me. Burned out? Burnt out? I don't know. Pick whichever one you like better. The y-intercept is the same point, but on the y-axis. What is the value of the y-intercept? 10, give me some units. Centimeters. Well, what does that tell us? It tells us the time is zero, but what does that mean in terms of this context? The candle was 10 centimeters high. So really, in this context, what the two intercepts give us are the beginning and the end. At the beginning, how high was the candle? 
10 centimeters at the end when it's zero. How much time did that take? 45 seconds. And then we're just going to throw in domain and range just to practice. So domain we know is the left and the right. So look to the left, what's the lowest point on the graph? Zero. Look to the right, where does the graph end? 45. If we're going to do interval notation, what kind of brackets? Is there a dot right at zero or is it close to zero? It's right at zero, so that tells us it is a square bracket. Is there a dot at 45 or is it close to 45? It's right at 45, so it is square. If we wanted to give the other notation, how do we say between 0 and 45? What's the notation for between? <coughs> Let me put this. Less than or equal to x. Less than or equal to. You can pick whichever one of those notations you like better. The range looks down, then look up. What's the lowest point on the y-axis? Zero. What's the highest point on the y-axis? Do we include zero, so round bracket or square bracket? Square, because there's a dot at zero. And at 10, square. If we wanted to use set notation, it would be? We're going to put a y because it's range. Less than or equal to? Question so far. Turn to someone, tell them what an x intercept is. Reply back and tell them what a y intercept is. the graph first, figure out what the situation is about. <laughs> What's this about? Electrician. What are the two variables? Which is independent. Time is independent, therefore dependent is cost. What is the y-intercept? Write it down. What is the y-intercept? What number did you write down? 60. Give me some units. Dollars. What does it represent? Well, it's telling us time equals zero. What does that mean if time equals zero? You're paying 60 bucks no matter what. Well, why would a company charge you money if they haven't done any work yet? And this happens all the time with service companies, whether it's somebody repairing your appliance, looking at your furnace, doing plumbing work. Why do you have to pay money if they haven't even done anything yet? Travel, right? They had to pay to get to your house, and they had to pay gas and insurance and everything else. So that's typical. We call it the flat fee. Sometimes you'll hear flat rate. So this is telling you the flat rate is 60. Haven't even touched, walked in your doorway yet, and you're paying them $60. It's crazy. Why is there no x-intercept? <coughs> okay, why? Why doesn't it cross the x-axis? Because cost can't be zero, right? So remember, x-intercept is telling you information about the other variable. It's telling you the cost is zero. Is it possible to have no cost? Well, if you never call them, but let's assume you called them, can you have a cost of zero? Even if you call them and change your mind and they don't even come to your house, guess what they're charging you? $60. There is no way to have a cost of zero.
first last thing we're going to look at is how to draw graphs using intercepts. And this is going to carry us into Unit 6. So this idea will come back. And it's not giving us a situation this time. It's just giving us an equation. And how do we know by looking at that equation that it's linear? No exponent greater than 1. And all we want to do is be able to draw that graph. That's it. We want to be able to take that graph, put it on the grid using the intercepts. Method number one, calculate the x-intercept. How? Well, what do you know about y at the x-intercept? Zero. So set x equal to y. I meant y equal to zero. And solve. Set y equal to 0 and solve. What do you think step 2 might be? <coughs> Calculate the y-intercept. That says the, although it doesn't look like it now, but it says the. How? Set x equal to 0 and solve. That cough sounds nasty. Plot these points. And just a quick reminder from grade 7, when you have a coordinate point, the first one is x, the first one is y. x is your horizontal movement, so you're counting left or right. Y is your up and down movement. Join the points with a line. Put arrows at the end. Join the points with a line, put arrows at the end. I'm going to take this little space and I'm going to split it. I'm going to do x-intercept on the left, y-intercept on the right. If you don't like my abbreviation, you can write out the whole word. I'm going to take the equation in the question, and for x-intercept, I'm going to take a zero or y out and put 0 in. So I kept my 2x. I put in 0 for y and kept my 4. For y-intercept, I'm going to do the same thing, but instead of keeping the x, I'm going to keep the y. So I'm going to put a 0 in for x, keep the y, keep the 4. These now just become little tiny linear equations to solve. So bed mass, exponents, brackets we don't have. Next would be multiplication. Well, what's 2x minus 0? It's just 2x. How do I get rid of a coefficient of 2? Divide by 2. So x equals 2. This is the coordinate point 2 comma 0. That's what we calculated is where y equals 0. 2 times 0 on the other side. 0, so I'm left with minus y equals 4. How do I get rid of the coefficient of negative 1? Divide by negative 1. So y equals negative 4. This is a coordinate point. This is the point 0, negative 4. There's step one and two. Step three is we're just going to plot the points. Two zero means two to the right, zero up and down. Here's a hint. That point has to be on the y on the x-axis. Why? Because it's the x-intercept. So if you're putting it somewhere else than on the axis, you've done something wrong. Where's this point going to go? Well, zero left and right, four down to negative four. Again, it has to be on the y-axis. Most common mistake is people are going to take these two numbers and make them into a point. 
you're going to want to say that this is the point 2, negative 4. And what happens if you come over here and you put the point 2, negative 4, you're only going to have one point. And how many points do we need to draw a line? We need two. So these are not coordinates that go together. These are the intercepts. Last step, grab a ruler, because we are not barbarians. We use a ruler. We are scientists and mathematicians. If you don't have a ruler, there's one up front. Use the edge of the calculator. Use the edge of the phone. Use the edge of a piece of paper. Use anything that is straight. And the very last step, because this is a linear function, we know lines go on forever. We're just going to put the arrowheads on the top and the bottom. There's graphing your first linear function. Next year, I'm going to show you three different ways to do the exact same thing. Again, just to repeat, what your brain is going to want to do is going to want to take this x and this y and make a point out of them. And if you plot that point 2, negative 4, what are you going to join it to? Right? You're not going to have any other point on the graph. So these are separate points where the other coordinate is 0. You don't have to split the page. My brain just works left and right. It's just the way it works. So this is the x-intercept, the y-intercept. What do we know about the x-intercept? What do we know about the value of y? It is 0. So I'm going to take the equation, take out y, put in 0. What's negative 2 times 0? So I'm left with 3x equals 6. Here's a trick that tactile people like. What you can do is take the equation and just cover the part that has 0. And that's what you're going to be left with to solve for the x-intercept. So just cover wherever the y is, what's left, 3x and 6. How do we get rid of the 3? x equals 2. Again, I like to write the point right away to remind myself that this does not combine with the other side. So this is the point 2, comma, 0. It's also why I put the squiggle so that in my brain those are completely separate calculations. They don't go together to make a point. If you're tactile, what you can do here is just cover wherever you see x. Whatever's left is going to be the y-intercept, because 3 times 0 is going to be 0. How do we get rid of a coefficient of negative 2? Divide by negative 2. y equals negative 3. What's the coordinates of that point? 0, negative 3. Another mistake is people are going to put negative 3, 0. You have to remember x always comes before y. That's the hard part. Next step is the easy part. Put them on the graph. 2, 0, 0, negative 3. If your points are not on the x and y axis, that means you have done something wrong. You'll always have one on the x, one on the y. The last step, just join them and put the arrowheads. Thank you. Show me your thumb so far on intercepts. I'm getting, kind of getting, not getting. Good. Take a look at this one. OMG, what is this? What is that? What did we call it way back at the beginning of the unit? Functional. Notation. It's just telling you, hey, I'm a function and my independent variable is x. f of x is the exact same thing as y. f of x is the exact same thing as y. The reason we tend not to call everything y is because when you're dealing with more than one function, you can't name them. So you in your head can just put this into a y. It's fine. It's the exact same thing. If you don't like the f of x, get rid of it. x-intercept first. X-intercept means what is 0? Y. So I'm going to take out the Y, put in a 0, leave everything else. Little tiny linear equation. How do I get rid of the plus 4? Subtract 4. How do I get rid of the coefficient of 4? Divide by 4. 
x equals minus 1. Again, I like to write those coordinates right away so my brain's not going to mix up those two sides. What are the coordinates of the x-intercept? So negative 1 has to come first because it's the x, and then 0. Why can't it be 0, negative 1? Because x has to come before y. They're alphabetical. Go ahead and calculate the y-intercept. Give me the coordinates of the y-intercept. Why isn't it 4, 0? Because x has to come before y. Plot the points, minus 1, 0, 0, 4. Join them. Don't forget your arrowheads. Why do we have to put arrowheads? Because lines go on forever unless the question tells you otherwise. Well, let's put everything from this unit together. Here's the same house call one we just talked about. Here are some typical questions they can ask you. Are the point, why are the points joined? What's the slope of the line? What does it represent? What's the y-intercept? What does it represent? Yesterday, he charged 190 for the job. How many hours did he work? So this is taking everything now we've done into the unit and just mixing and matching the questions. Part A, turn and talk. Talk to your partner about why are the, uh, why are the points joined. Why are the points joined? You can work in between them. Give a little more specific. Try not to use the word them, that, thing. You can work partial hours. Write down whatever you want that makes sense for that question. So you can work in between hours. You can work partial hours. He can work 30 minutes. He can work whatever. Whatever makes sense in your head. Try not to use thing, that, this in definitions. Part B, slope we did yesterday. What's the letter that we use to represent slope? YM. Because it's French. What's the little words that we use to remind ourselves which is M is rise over run. You don't need to write it down. It's just helpful for some people to see it. Pick any two points on the graph. Make your little triangle. You don't need to draw the triangle, but some brains it helps. I could have picked the other points. You pick any two points you want. What is the rise between those points? Well, the first one is at 60, and the second one is at 180. So how much did we rise between 60 and 180? 120. Confirm. Okay, rise, we're at zero, or sorry, run, we're at zero, and we're at three here. How many units did we run? Can we reduce? What does it represent? Remember, slope is always something per something. So that is the cost for. Now here's a trick you can remember is what's on the bottom of a fraction that we don't see, but we know it's there. So that is the cost for every one hour. So that's his hourly cost, which is actually very low for an electrician. Yeah, that's very, very low for an electrician. See, so write down the y-intercept and tell me what it represents. Mm -hmm. 
Give me a value and some units. I think $60 sounded confirmed. We did this question on the last page. What does it represent? Flat fee, flat rate, cost before he works, cost when he arrives, what you have to pay for no work, whatever makes sense to you. Do you understand the difference between what the slope represents and what the y-intercept represents? So slope is the cost per hour, y-intercept is the flat cost, doesn't matter the hours. Yesterday he charged 190 for a job, how many hours did he work? It's actually a question from grade 9, how did we do it in grade 9? Yep, so go to the graph. Now what? Find 190. Well, 190 has to be slightly above 180. Now what? Go down wherever it hits. Rough estimate. Three and a half. Maybe 3.6-ish, I'm okay with that too. We're just estimating roughly three and a half hours. They could ask you the domain and range. They could ask you a whole bunch of questions. This is just a sample of kind of everything from the unit. How are we feeling? Last one with your friend, or not a friend, I don't care. Do it by yourself, whatever. <laughs>